Hello and good day. My name is Tyler, and this is the Honest Amp Sim Reviews meet and greet session with Baseforge Rex Brown. I'm very excited about this plugin from Joey Sturgis Tones JST because you know what? Rex Brown has been one of my favorite bass players for over 25 years. I've been a big Pantera fan, a big Down fan for, for many years now, and so getting to try this plugin uh, was absolute. I really needed to try this plugin, and obviously for the page anyways, but you know what? There was a little kid in me saying, I need this plugin right now. I want to try it. So let's take you through the default tone. That sounds awesome. You know what? If there's so much pressure these days for, for developers to have that amazing tone as soon as you open the plugin. And Joey Sturgis tones are very good, or is, are very good at making sure that there is a, a nice tone when you open up their plugins. So thanks for that. Moving along, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you for a real quick run through the, the, uh, the various panels. They're set up really easy, lots of ease of use. First, we have our pedal section, our pre-pedal section, which is kind of a, um, a distortion slash OD slash, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a multi-purpose gain distortion pedal. We have the amp. I think the amp looks absolutely incredible. This uh, I like the bullet decal. That's pretty awesome. But all of this is really, really, really cool. Um, it looks like a 70s or 80s PV. I don't know if that was the aim but that's that's kind of what I'm looking at, like the teal and the graphics around the knobs. And then this section looks like an Ampeg. And then this section down here kind of looks like a trainer. Very, very cool graphic. Okay, we've got the match cab. We've got the Ampeg 8x10. We've got your own impulse response loader for when you want to uh, rather load your own. Don't mind the loading wheel. That uh, actually probably has something to do with the video software I'm using, not the plugin. So we have a bass chorus, a reverb. You have a parametric EQ that you can use for a number of different things. And then we have your compression section back here. All right. So we're just going to work around inside the default, uh, sorry, the default preset. I'm going to show you some of the presets that I made a little bit later. But for now, um, we're just going to go panel by panel and work with the default tone for a bit. Okay. That sounds awesome. So we haven't really done anything yet. All we did was hit this pedal. Now this pedal is super versatile. You can blend it. Crushing. Right now I'm on the neck pickup. Go to the middle of the two pickups. Now back to the bridge. I'm not going to show off too much on the bass today. I just want to give you, um, you know, kind of some some basic notes. No pun intended. I want to give you some um, notes that I feel are gonna can I can I help the. Uh, the the plugin sound good. I won't be doing any slap or pop or anything like that. Maybe a little bit of finger style. I'm not much of a finger style player. I'm going to say that in advance. But we're going to give it a shot. So another thing this is good for, I mean, you can get max. You can get max distortion. Really, really... That sounds really good. Apologies for the uh, buzz there, the subtle buzz. We're gonna get that. Let's get rid of that. Okay, yeah, there's a, definitely a noise gate in there as well, so don't worry. They, they do give you a lot of distortion, but they give you a way to control it too. So now that we've shown you the, rather I've shown you the, you know, the, the high gain part of this pedal, 
I'm going to show you my favorite use for it. I'm going to back the blend off. We're going to crank the treble. I think you can see where this is going if you've ever used a tube screamer before. We're, that's how we're going to use it. Drive is going to be out just, just a pinch. And then it levels up. Now hear the difference. You can hear how much it's pushing the uh, the amp. So I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it like that, but I'm gonna turn it off just for now. I'm gonna show you my favorite setting on this entire plugin, right here. This little uh, Ghost Rider kind of skull. We're gonna make him angry. Look, that's cool. You can make him angry, and then he's just gonna go back here and chill. But where I liked it ends right about in the middle here, and I'll show you how much difference this, just this one fader makes. Okay, so this is without. Now we're gonna crank it about halfway. You can hear that difference right away, it's huge. So much more bite. Now we're gonna make him a little bit more angry. I'm not gonna dime it. I'm not gonna turn it all the way up. No pun intended. Dime, get it, Pantera. Now listen to how awesome that sounds. I I'm just love that tone. I, I would be I would be content just going to mix with the tone that I have right now. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like that. Well, actually, I'm gonna bring them down. I'm gonna bring them down to about the halfway. That's where I'm. That's where I'm most comfortable with the uh, clean to nasty. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, maybe about two thirds. I'm gonna leave the uh, the EQ pretty much alone. This I used for kind of some extra extra tweaking along the lines. Take some middle out. <laughs> Overall, I didn't really touch the uh, the middle EQ that much. Over here, we have uh, four controls, just four, and that's all you're really gonna need. Okay, the drive is kind of what pushes the head. The contour co uh, rather controls your, you know, kind of where the where the midsection lies, so to speak. You'll notice it. So you kind of contour your mids to taste. Now this knob right here, when I use the Rex Brown in a few different mixes. I use this knob when I was mixing more because this kind of really helped me figure out where it was gonna fit in the mix just by this much on the top here. Not even the entire dial. I, I kind of just went through just a little bit and it helped fit into a mix a little bit better. Actually a lot better. So if you want to kind of find that place, just that find that place where your bass is gonna kind of peek through in the mids and kind of give you some more of that that grind to it. This is a good knob to try that with. Okay, I'm gonna run it at about uh, five right now. Now the thump, the thump gives you that low end, obviously. I love it, I really do. I'm not going to be doing too many of those. Don't worry. It was necessary. Just once though, right? Okay. So the bark obviously is going to be your, uh, to me, it sounds like high mids and treble. And it gives you some of that, that, I don't know. I just, for lack of a better word, call it stank or snot. Grit. That sounds just oh awesome. It's just so, so 
uh, there's just so much bite to it. And we haven't really done a whole lot. I mean, I haven't been I haven't been dialing too much, even for the presets that I did get, which are we're going to load up a little bit later. Check these out. Uh, we're going to load those up a little bit later. But even for those, I didn't work. I didn't have to work too hard for them. All I did was I spent a couple hours getting to know the plugin, how it works and how the various components uh, behave. Uh, and then I just kind of went to work making plugins. It was really easy. to, You know, you have a tone in your mind. It's really easy to get by just thinking about it. All right, so now I have the amp set eh, kind of like I want it. I'm going to back this off still a little bit more. One other thing is that there are two channels. So for every preset that you save, you can make sure that there are two. Uh, it's kind of like two presets in one. So you can make sure that you do that if you'd like. I didn't do it with uh, really any of my presets, but I can see how it would come in handy for like, say, a song. You, you have two different bass, uh, bass sounds or maybe an album. You save, uh, you know, save the two. So, let's move along to the match cab. Now the JST match cab feature is something that uh, they also have in many of their Bass Forge and, and Tone Forge products. The match cab sounds crushing. Um, it really does and it's, uh, they work hard on it and you can tell that it really is the ideal cab for the head. So when I move to the Ampeg SVT, a little bit sloppy today, my apologies. So you've got four different mic selections here. You've got your sub kick, your 421, and a couple others. I like the 421, so we're gonna we're gonna stick around with that. And they also have a sub kick option for the first time that I've seen one in a JST plugin, so that's cool as well. If you want to use the, uh, it's kind of like, I guess it's the like the um, uh, Yamaha sub kick, so you can, uh, which is often used to mix uh, mix bass. So use that to your heart's content to create some low. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the match cab. Well, we might as well go with the impulse response. Uh, for impulses today, I'm adding the brand new Celestion BN10 uh, 410 bass amp, uh, bass amp pack. Sounds really good to me, but we'll go through a couple more right here. This, see, this is the, something that I, I feel some developers leave out when they I give you the option to add your own impulse response, but they don't really give you an option to mess around too much in that folder. It's kind of just pick one and stick with it. How often do we do that? We don't do that often, do we? Where we can, we just know the impulse we want ahead of time. It's very seldom for me anyways. So you have these backwards and forwards arrows that make it easy for you to kind of mess around inside the folders of... Uh, the impulses you're looking for. This is a really cool sounding pack. I haven't uh, demoed it that much yet. Switching between pickups here. I really like having the uh, the blend between the two, maybe just a little bit more towards the neck. For a bass, the bass I'm using today is an SR650, an Ibanez sound gear uh, with Nordstrand pickups. Nordstrand pickups, I got to tell you, you know, this we're not endorsed or anything like that. But when I first picked up this bass, I don't really like playing bass that much. I'm a guitarist, but I do enjoy it from time to time. I do it for recording purposes and demo and review, but I don't play a lot of bass in my spare time. So when I bought this bass, the Nordstrand pickups actually were so good that it just made bass uh, it kind of really opened my eyes to uh, what, my, what I really wanted my bass tone to sound like. Some, some people might say, well, the pickups aren't that big a deal. Yeah, they are. So you can take that and cram it.
So let's, let's slow it down. Sounds really good to me. And you know, you're going to hear me say that off and I'll stop playing and say, that sounds really good. But it does. It really does. So I'm not really sure where else I can go with that. You want to make it sound better though? I'll show you how. You've got a stereo and a kind of a dual chorus. You can switch between two different chorus settings. So for this one, let's create just kind of a low, low impact chorus sound. Oh, we got to switch over to it. My bad. You hear the difference right away. The difference in uh, the size of the bass tone. Check it out again. Here's one thing I want you to listen for. Listen to the picking response. I'm going to go from light to not so light. I'm not running a whole lot of compression right now, so you'll be able to hear the dynamic difference. You hear the picking response is just awesome. There's so much attack in it. And yet when you want to back off, it lets you back off. So I'm going to do a tiny bit of finger style playing right now. No judgment here, folks. I'm not a good finger style, style player and I'm not doing anything to show off here. I'm just trying to show you uh, the finger style players out there, how it sounds. <laughs> hear that snap I'll go nice and low and a little bit heavier not too bad isn't it so for finger style players for slap and pop players this is not a metal, uh, rather a metal amp sim this is meant to be versatile Rex Brown is not just a metal player you might know him from his work in Pantera, but he's also been in several other projects that weren't just metal. So he, you can tell that there was uh, a lot of decision and uh, design um, that m ensured versatility here. You could tell that was something they were going for, for from the beginning. So now we get to the parametric EQ. I'm not really going to go through this too much. You know how it works. And then let's be honest. Right here, it gives you the opportunity to change your size of your Q. Okay, and here is where you can add your gain, and then here is where you find your frequency. It's pretty easy. If you don't know how to use a parametric EQ, and you don't really necessarily want to use one, I, I suggest you learn how to use this EQ, but if you don't really want to use it, double click. That's one thing. All of these components and the panels are all bypassable. You can double click on all of them, or click signal path, and right here, it lays it out for you where you can single click and just get stuff out of your way that you don't need to use. I do want to point out, if you bypass the internal cab, sorry, if, if you in, uh, decide to bypass the internal cab like that, all of this stuff down here is now in your way. Okay, so now this stuff here that was supposed to come after your cab in these grand scheme of things, now this stuff is going to come before your cab, which you're going to be loading in in your effects window down here, if you're using your own loader. If you do that, you know, keep in mind that this stuff may have to be bypassed as well. 
So if you're really looking to use your own impulses and you want to stick with the whole signal chain, just use the, as we're using right now, the impulse response loader. Okay, we're going to go back to the JST match cab. And it really does sound awesome. There's no need to bypass this cab that often unless you're looking for something very specific. One thing about Rex Brown's bass tone that I want to mention is that Dimebag, his guitar tone is legendary. Everybody knows who Dimebag is. Everybody knows what his guitar sound uh, is like. People know what Pantera sounds like. But what a lot of people don't necessarily keep in mind is that Rex Brown's bass tone carried, helped to carry, and was a big part of um, Dimebag's guitar tone. Without Rex Brown's bass tone, Dimebag's guitar tone might not have sounded nearly as good. But they those two... Um, with the chemistry they have as musicians, they also had chemistry with their tones and they dialed things in that worked so perfectly. So maybe Dimebag's tone wasn't, was, you know, was a little bit less than conventional solid state amps, probably wasn't a whole lot of headroom uh, left when he was turning everything up, but Rex Brown's bass tone kind of came in behind and made sure that it all worked. So that's one thing that's, that's worth mentioning for sure. That and the fact that uh, Rex Brown has experience with some of, if not of the majority of the, some of the best bass gear uh, ever made. You know, so this guy put a ton of experience and a ton of knowledge into this plugin. So we're going to head over to my favorite section, and that is your compression section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress the heck out of it. I'm going to smash it, but I'm also going to use the peak reduction. So you'll hear that if you, let's, let's show you as we go. When you crank this up, it's going to make things pretty loud. And you're thinking, well, I don't want to do that. But that's where this comes into play. I'm not going to smash it too crazy, though. So now I want to leave this virtually uncompressed. So now the compression, I can decide I can bring it all the way in. Rather, I can bring it all the way in. And I can kind of go between the two. So you can really, and then you can blend however you'd like. You can also choose to compress or limit. I'm just going to run it back where it was. Okay. It gets a little bit woompy, but then if it does, you can go over here and find out where the, you know, the low mids or wherever it is that you need to kind of uh, take out a little bit of, and then you can do it right in here if you need to. But this is a really unique tool to let, that lets you compress without necessarily compressing all of it. And you can kind of fade things in and out as you see fit. My, my, uh, my suggestion is learn how to use this section because it's very useful um, to getting your bass tone to really carry through a mix. Okay, so now we're just going to kind of ease our way out of the conversation here with some presets. I'm going to go through the various presets that I made um, with this plugin and then... We're going to shut her down. So uh, as I go through here, I'm just going to show you maybe how I did some of them. The first one is made to kind of be like uh, Danny Loker's bass tone. If you're not familiar with who he is, look him up. He's a very unique bass tone. That's uh, well, I think I did. I think I did okay with it. So that's what I was able to do 
with Danny Gold, Danny Lilker's tone. Um, of course, from Stormtroopers of Death, Brutal Truth, Nuclear Assault, and a number of other bands. These presets are going to be available on our preset vault. Where you can come to our website, which is in the description, and drop by and see us. And you can head to our preset vault, which will have, uh, which does have 500 plus presets for a number of different amp sims, uh, Superior Drummer 3, bass amp sims, etc. So my favorite, I think my favorite preset that I created was the Fat and Cool. So I'm just going to show you what we did for that one. Okay. Maybe I can bring the angry guy up a little bit. Yeah, I butchered that, but you get the idea. I think it sounds terrific. This is a really good sounding plugin, guys. It really is. So feel free to go through, um, you know, feel free to go, like I said, to go through our preset vault, and you know, these will be available eventually. You have the Iron Maiden, Lemmy, Swiss Army Knife that uh, I kind of designed this one just to, just to be kind of good at every little bit everything, of everything. Apologize. Can't catch my words together today, apparently. general rock tone so really you're starting to see a little bit about what makes this amp so versatile there are so many different ways to add um, to add edit shape your gain distortions you have the pedal you have your little uh, clean to nasty fella over here you have your drive and then if you really want to go ahead add a pedal out in front of this you can bypass this if you want add your own pedal I suggest not bypassing this pedal because it's fantastic, but if you are so inclined, you can do that, add a fuzz pedal, do whatever you want, really. So we've taken you through the plugin. I'm going to have to shut her down. I really don't. I, I could keep playing this for another three hours, and, uh, and I have over the last few days. I'm going to end with possibly my favorite preset, and that is the Lemmy is God preset. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Thank you to GST for giving us the opportunity to have a look at this incredible plugin uh, in advance. And uh, you know what, guys? Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Go and play. Play bass, play guitar. Just make sure you're always playing. Come and see us at our website. It's in the description. And thank you and have a wonderful day.